put him right. Okay, so what we're going to do now, uh, following the initial setup and verifying your domain in the first video tutorial I put together, is actually add some users to our uh, school. So what we're going to add today is our staff and our students. The only thing you'll need is a list of all of your student names that are going on Google Apps, all of your staff name, also their this existing staff email addresses too so as they can use the same email address to log into Google Apps as they do to access their email at the moment. All right so let's get started. First thing that you'll need to do is go to admin.google.com and you'll need to enter your username and password that you created in the initial setup. And then from here, the only two areas we're going to be bothered with at this stage is our users and our groups. So the first area that we're going to look at is users. Click into users. Yours is probably going to have nothing in it, maybe one, one or two users if you've added one manually. But what we're going to do is add uh, people to it in bulk today. First thing that we're going to do is add some students to it. So if we click this button up here that says add more users, and we select the option to add several users at once for a CSV file. This is going to be our fastest and most efficient way to do this. There are other ways of doing it. Um, if you want to add someone manually, that may be easy if you've got one or two people to add. But if you're talking about adding a whole school, this is by far the fastest way. The whole process should take around 15 minutes to do. Okay, so for the first stage of this, uh, you're going to get asked to generate a spreadsheet. Uh, you can do anything I'm talking about here in Microsoft Excel if you feel more comfortable doing that but just because we're in Google Docs at the moment we have all these options up here I'm going to do this example in Google Docs so it's straightforward and everyone watching this can do it the same way. So if we click on our drive icon up the top it should take you to your Google Drive account and you may or may not have documents in there. If you do, if you don't, don't worry. But we're going to hit create a spreadsheet. Now, if you go back to the admin console, it's telling us exactly how it wants the spreadsheet laid out. So it wants email address, first name, last name, and a password. So I've just selected that on that console and I'm now going to go to the spreadsheet and just paste it in. Now this is where things do get a little bit time consuming and this is where I'm going to let you work this out the best way you can for your school. If you're adding all your students you can get this data off a few different sources. You can get it off Cena if it's been regularly updated but probably your best bet is to go to the office and ask for all your students uh, to be generated um, with their first name and their last name will generate the email address and the password. It's quite straightforward. So what I'm going to do is just generate about 10 um, fake users for the moment and then I'm going to come back and talk about a few things that we need to be aware of. Okay, back to it. A couple of things that you might want to do before we go any further is to give this spreadsheet a name. So we might call this one student data, or whatever you want. And the other thing that we want to do is we want all of our students to have a generic password to log in when they first log on. Now they can have the option to change this later or you can force everyone to change it. But just for your own sanity, you probably want everyone to have that same password. So I'm just going to type in the box at the top here the word password. I'll put a capital P on it. Now for my 10 users here, my 9 or 10 users, if I want them all to have that same password, if I click on the bottom right and drag that down, you'll see that I've now generated, generated that password for all of those people. And you could do that for as many people as you want. 
The next part is where it gets a little bit more complex and I, I want to point out a few things here. You can go through and give every one of your students a unique username. You may already have something like this in place at your school. Uh, I wouldn't recommend giving students their full um, name like Phil Smith at St Michael's because it um, it's just not good practice for cyber safety for us to do that. So you might just want to make it a little bit more anonymous by giving them a name like P Smith or um, another, another method you may have in use at your school. So I'm just going to go with this model of first letter of their first name plus their full surname. I'm going to fill that out and I'm going to come back and talk about another problem that you may come across. Okay, so there's a couple of things missing here is that all of our usernames don't have the extension that they need on them to work properly. So if my school was St. Michael's, just for argument's sake, what I might do here is type in my school address and I'm just going to copy the at through to the end there and then on the each of these I'm going to paste onto the end of their usernames. Okay, so what we've got here is a set of usernames, their first name, their surname and a password. Everything's looking good except for my first two users here who have the exact same username. This is not going to work. You need to come up with some sort of solution uh, in the way that you name your students so that you never have this situation arise where you've got P Smith and P Smith. So have a bit of a think about how you're going to manage this at your school. Um, whatever you do, do it the same for all students. Um, but in my case here, just to differentiate between the two, I'm just going to put a P Smith too. You might put a birth year or something in there. That's up to you. Um, have a chat with people at your school about the best way you think that might be managed. So essentially, I've just created all of my student uh, data there within that little spreadsheet. The next stage is then to upload this into uh, my Google Admin Console. Okay, so I've finished entering all of my student data. Obviously yours is going to be a lot longer, but you get the idea of generating a generic password and also generating different usernames for your students. So what we need to do once we're happy with that document, and make sure you've got that right before you upload it, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches down the track, is we're going to click File and Download as a comma separated value or CSV sheet. Now, depending on the browser you're doing this in, I'd recommend doing it in Chrome. You'll see this gets downloaded to your downloads area on your computer. Just make sure uh, you can find it. The name should match up with what you have called it up the top here. So we're finished in this part of it for now. We are then going to go back into the admin console. Okay, so now we're in the admin console. We filled this out as we should. There's just a couple of things you need to be aware of here. Basically, the first one is, is not that important, but this one here you need to be aware of that if you update these spreadsheets over time, so at the end of every year and you enter the same student um, as they progress through year levels or you just bulk upload a whole heap of people, if those fields are the same, it won't overwrite or delete all of the previous account information. So if they had documents or anything like that, it won't be overwritten. But obviously, if you've changed their password, it will change their password. So every time you upload one of these spreadsheets over the top of an existing user, it does update them, but it doesn't delete them. The other box here you might want to tick is, in this case, it's probably not a bad thing to do because we've given everyone the same password is requiring a password change when new or updated users sign in. Uh, you can have this discussion at your school and work out whether this is the right thing to do, but in most cases it wouldn't be a bad move to do this. So I'm just going to tick it in this case. So once you're happy with that, we're going to choose the file, and this is the file that we just downloaded. 
So in this case, it was this student data sheet from my downloads area. And we hit upload and continue. And it's just giving a preview now to make sure that everything's all right. That these are the format of how everything's going to look. And that's exactly what we want. Everything looks good to me. And we'd hit confirm and upload. If you obviously needed to change it, you'd hit this one and go back and change it. Now this can take a bit of time to happen, especially if you're putting on a couple of hundred users. Don't be shocked if you go back into your users and you see that there's none there. Come back in a couple of hours generally and it's pretty much all done. Um, but you can continue to add users at this time. So we've just added all of the students. What would we do different if we were adding our staff? The only thing you need to do different is this. If we go into the users section, and we click on add new users we're going to do everything the same here except for one thing in these fields here we're going to enter their first name last name you can still give them a generic password and they can change it on their first login but you would be wise to get your existing staff email addresses. You might be just able to pull this out of uh, Outlook or a school email um, collection you've got somewhere, or you might need to go to the office to get this. But if you make their uh, Google Apps login the same as their email, um, it's going to cause a whole lot less confusion than having two usernames. And it won't cause any problem with their existing mail. It won't redirect their mail or anything like that. At the moment, we haven't actually set Google Apps up to touch mail. We're just setting it up to access documents and things. We'll talk about that, the mail side of things, a bit later on. So do the exact same process as I've done for students, but make sure that your teachers have their existing email addresses in here. Once you've done that, you can begin to create some groups within the school. So we're going to have a look at groups next. Now, obviously, as I said, you might not be able to do this all in one sitting because your students and teachers might not upload all at once. So I'm going to end this video here and the next one we'll be looking at creating groups.